What's up you guys? So macros in Vim or NeoVim are an advanced feature that can be really helpful in automating repetitive tasks and be a really nice boost to your productivity. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys everything you need to know about macros in Vim or NeoVim and how to make the most of them. Let's get started. All right, so before we dive into macros, the first thing you should understand is what registers are. I have NeoVim opened up here, which is what I use, but everything I'm gonna be talking about in this video also applies to regular Vim. Now I'm gonna do colon H and registers so we can see some more information about them. As you can see here in number four, there are 26 named registers for each letter in the alphabet from A to Z, and you can access them with either the lowercase or the uppercase version of the letter. There are some other registers in this list, but the ones that we wanna care about right now are these named registers. Essentially, these registers can be used to store text. So when you copy, delete, change any text in NeoVim, you can specify one of these registers to copy that text into it and you can also use these registers to record macros. Now let's say I want to copy this first function into a specific register. Let's say you want to use register A. You can use double quote and then follow that with A and I'm going to do Y for yank and then a motion for what I want to copy. I'm going to do 2J. As you can see here down at the bottom, it says three lines yanked into register A. Now, if I wanna paste the contents from this register, I can do double quote A and then P to paste. When you don't specify registers explicitly, then Vim or NeoVim will use the default register instead. You can also see the contents of all of the registers by doing colon and REG and enter. Now, as you can see here, register A, has the contents of that function. When you start recording a macro, it'll save each keystroke as text in a register. I'm gonna go two lines up here. Let's say for example that we wanna change these double quotes to single quotes. And we're gonna save this macro to register A. To start recording, you can press Q and then specify the name of the register. Let's use A. As you can see here at the bottom, it says recording to register A. And then I can do F double quote, press R to replace and press single quote, then semicolon to go to the next double quote and R to replace and single quote. Now I can finish recording by pressing Q again. Now we can execute this macro. Let's go four lines down and go to the beginning of this line. We need to do this for the macro to work. Now to execute it, you can press the at symbol and then follow that with the name of the register with the macro you want to execute. In this case, it's A. Awesome. Now let's go down four lines again and go to the beginning. If you want to repeat that again and use the macro from the last used register, you can do at at. To clarify, this is the at sign or shift two. Now again, as I mentioned, the macro is saved to the register, so we could paste the macro into this file. If I do double quote A, which is the register we wanna access and press P, these are the contents of the macro. And it's basically the set of keystrokes that Vim or NeoVim will execute to run your macro. You can modify this if you wanted to do something different. For example, let's say we wanna change single quotes back to double quotes. Then instead of looking for a double quote, let's replace this with a single quote and then over here this single quote will be a double quote and this single quote will be a double quote as well. So we'll use F to go to the next single quote in a line and replace that with a double quote. Then use semicolon to go to the next one and replace that with a double quote. Now let's save this back into register A so I can do double quote A and DD. Now if I go up here and do at A, it'll change it back to double quotes. Pretty awesome. Now the most effective way to use macros is when you want to automate something that is really repetitive. To do this, you have to create the macro in a thoughtful recursive fashion. I'm gonna undo everything here. And let's say now that we wanna change all of these console.log statements to be return statements instead. I'm gonna go to the top of this file. So now we can start recording the macro. Let's use Q to start recording and let's use a different register. Let's use R. And to make this recursive, we need to make sure that we first look for the next console.log. I'm gonna use forward slash and look for console.log. And now I'm gonna to delete to the first opening parenthesis by doing D 
F opening parenthesis, then I'm going to go into insert mode and type out return, exit insert mode, look for the closing parenthesis with F closing parenthesis, and I'm going to delete it with X. Now I can finish recording by pressing Q. Now the beauty of this is that when I want to execute it again, it will just look for the next console.log and change it to a return statement. So if I do at R, it worked exactly how we expected it to. And now I can specify a specific number of times that I want this to repeat. For example, in this file, I have three more functions. So you can specify a number three and then do at R. Again, this is with the at sign. I'm going to undo all of this. Now I'm going to show you guys a different example where we navigate the cursor where we need it to be at the end of the macro so that it can easily repeat. What I want to do is change each function to an arrow function instead. First thing we need to do is make sure that the cursor is over here at the beginning of the file. So I'm going to start recording with Q and I'm going to record to register F. I want to change this word I'm in. So C I W to const. So that first function is a variable. Instead, I'm going to exit insert mode, then go to the opening parenthesis with F opening parenthesis, go into insert mode, add an equal sign here, exit insert mode, go to the opening curly brace with F opening curly brace, insert mode, then do equal sign and greater than sign exit insert mode, and then go to the opening curly brace. Now to make this recursive, I need to place the cursor where it needs to go to run the macro again. To do that, I can navigate to the end of this function by going to the closing curly brace, I can do closing bracket, and then closing curly brace. And because each function in this file is separated by an empty line, all I need to do now is do to J and I'm there. Now that we place the cursor where it needs to go, we can start recording with Q. Now let's say I want to repeat this for the four functions that are left, I can do for at and register F. And there we go, we changed all of the remaining functions in the file to arrow functions. Now again, I'm going to undo all of this. Now let's say that for some reason you recorded a macro, but you forgot to make it recursive. For example, if I paste in the contents of register F, which is the macro we just recorded, let's do double quote FP. If I remove this last portion here, where we go to the closing curly brace and two lines down, this would remove the macros recursiveness. Let's delete this and I'm going to paste back into register F by doing double quote FDD. Now if I go up to the top, if I execute it and do at F, it changes this first function to an arrow function, but the cursor stays in the opening curly brace. And that won't allow me to change the second function by just running it again. Now I can append to what is already in register F by doing Q and capital F. Now we can execute the keystrokes that we need to make this recursive again. Let's go to the closing curly brace with closing bracket, closing curly brace, and then to J and then press Q. Now if I do at F again, because we appended those new keystrokes, we made it recursive again. And the cursor is where we need it to be to be able to repeat the macro successfully. I'm going to undo all of this. And the last thing I want to show you guys is how to combine more than one macro into a single macro. For example, if you remember from earlier in register R, we recorded a macro to change the next console.log to a return statement. Now let's say we want to combine that with changing the function to an arrow function as well. Let's start recording in a new register. Let's do Q and let's record to register M. Now let's execute the first macro with at R. Then I want to go to the opening curly brace in the function. So I'm going to do opening bracket followed by opening curly brace, go to the start of this line with zero. And now the cursor is where we need it to, to use our other macro and change it to an arrow function. This is in register F. So we can do at F and then we can stop recording. Now if I do at M, we've successfully combined our two macros to change the console.log statement to a return and the function to an arrow function. If I do three at M, then it'll do it with the rest of the functions in the file. Pretty awesome. All right, you guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting and helpful. If you did, don't forget to leave a like down below. Let me know in the comment section if you have any questions or feedback for me. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more content like this from me. See you guys in the next one. Peace.